And boy, if I'm comfortable, that'll allow me to concentrate and perform. And if they think about decompression stress, it's a, a, an add-on at best. I think that's pretty common for most people, in part because the manufacturers have not been helpful in letting people know that this is a factor. I think the safety point of view is to prioritize concentration and performance. You have to have enough thermal protection that you can do the job or do the dive, whatever it is. So if you need something, you get something. Then you should be thinking about your decompression stress because the impact is huge. And the last thing to me should be comfort. When we're in a very cold dive, you come up and you say, how was the dive? Ah, it was toasty. Toasty means something different when you're diving in really cold water. But you can adapt, you can do well, you can perform, and I think it's important. And here's why. This is the best study that's been reported to date on this. And it was done at the Navy Experimental Diving Unit in Panama City, reported in 2007 by Wayne Girth. And what they did, they've got a huge habitat that's big enough to test underwater habitats. And they were able to put eight people on underwater ergometers and they could exercise in this underwater world. They were also able to swap out the water in this chamber pretty quickly. And so they had two water temperatures, either warm or cool. And they called it, warm is acceptable, 36 degrees, that's body temperature, that's warm. But Calling 27 degrees, 80 degrees cold, these, these are Floridian wimps. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is important in terms of thermal stress because your mean skin temperature is 32 degrees. So that is a fair bit of cooling. But to call it cold, give me a break. So we're going to call it warm and cool, really. But you should understand this intuitively. They did a 37-meter dive, 120 feet for 30 minutes, and then a long decompression, which allowed them to make the changes you'll see. You should understand, if you go down warm, you're maximally vasodilated, you're getting maximal delivery of blood and inert gas, you've got maximal uptake. And if you're cool on the way up, you're vasoconstricted, you're not pulling the gas from the periphery, you're going to have minimum elimination. It should make intuitive sense that that's the highest risk from a decompression point of view. Conversely, if we have somebody who goes down cool, they're going to start their dive vasoconstricted. They're never going to load those peripheral tissues. That's actually pretty safe. It may not be super comfortable, but it's actually pretty safe. And if they're warm on the way up, as long as it's a modest warm and not so warm that you promote skin bends, skin symptoms, because of decreased solubility in your peripheral tissues, you'll have really good elimination. Now, a lot of people look at this and say, I get it, I understand. It's perfectly clear, I don't care. Okay, I get that, I get that a lot. But let me tell you why you should care. If they had the divers going down warm and coming up cool, they had a 30 minute bottom time and bent 22% of their subjects. I think everybody here would accept the fact that 22% DCS is too high for a good protocol. Here's the part that's important. If they went down cool and came up warm, they were able to increase the bottom time to 70 minutes and only bent 1% of their subjects. So they more than doubled the bottom time and only bent 1%. So that is critical. And again, let me reinforce, no dive computer measures this. Huge impact, huge impact. So not in tropical water, but in temperate water or colder. Yes, so this is the thing that's important. By having that 87 minute decompression time, which was much more than they needed for 30, they could maintain exactly the same decompression and still do the 70 minute dive. So perfect question. So these were identical dives in terms of, of the total time of decompression. So the big difference was how much time they were able to spend at the bottom. And the thermal impact was huge. Regarding the thermal protection work, that